Welcome to CERT's podcast series on the Secure Coding Initiative. The CERT program is part of the Software Engineering Institute, a federally funded research and development center at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We're talking with Robert Secord, Senior Vulnerability Analyst at the Software Engineering Institute's CERT Coordination Center and author of Secure Coding in C and C++. Robert is project leader of CERT's Secure Coding Initiative, and in this podcast, he's going to tell us about CERT's Secure Coding Standards work. So how did CERT get involved in working on programming standards? We've been active with the International Standards Committee, uh, especially the WG14 uh, Committee for the C programming language, and I've been attending the meetings, and at a recent meeting in Berlin, the members of the Standards Committee approached me and asked us uh, if the CERT would be interested in developing a secure coding standard. Uh, The feeling at the time was that the closest uh, existing work was really inadequate for uh, the purpose of of software security in the C language. And the committee felt that CERT was a a good uh, organization to perform this work because of our reputation in the software security field and our position as a trusted broker. So what kind of standards are these? And will they be enforced by some group? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, one of the things I've already learned from this project is that the term standard has many meanings, uh, most of which can be applied to our work. First of all, a coding standard is a set of coding rules and guidelines created by a software development team or organization to ensure consistency in the application of good programming practices within the group. Coding standards can be considered a class of generic software requirements that indicate what software constructs, library functions, and other language-specific information must or must not be used. They are, in practice, a safe subsets of programming languages. The CERT Secure Coding Standards are useful to organizations who are looking to adopt or extend an existing standard. Second, a standard could be a set of requirements against which software must be evaluated to determine if it is in compliance with that standard. This is another goal we have for the CERT Secure Coding Standards, to provide a baseline against which software can be evaluated and consequently be compared against other products. Finally, a standard can be a formal document developed by a formal standards organization, such as the ISO IEC WG14 C Language Standards Committee. So how is your work related to the work of these other standards groups? Uh, CERT Secure Coding Standards have been developed in conjunction with the WG14 C Language Standards Committee, and they were submitted for a review and presentation at a recent London meeting in the spring of 2007. Uh, the WG14 is interested in publishing the CERT Secure Coding Standards as an ISO IEC Type 3 technical report, which is a uh, informative report. And they are also looking into mining the CERT Coding Standards for uh, a new major revision of the C standard that is now uh, underway. Uh, there's also been a number of uh, members of the WG14 committee which have taken it as an action item to uh, review the standard as it evolves. So besides C, are you developing standards for any other languages? Well, we've begun development of a secure coding standard for the C++ language, although the standard is not yet as advanced as the C effort. We're also discussing with potential partners to collaborate in developing secure coding standards for Java, Ada, Spark, and other languages. So you're getting a lot of participation outside CERT on this effort. The uh, Secure Coding Standard itself is a community effort, and all the work is performed on a public wiki. Software developers and software security specialists are invited to contribute rules and recommendations for the standard, either by sending us email or by adding them directly to the wiki. The wiki supports threaded discussions for public vetting and review, and once consensus is reached on a rule, is then incorporated into the Secure Coding Standard. So what's the difference between rules and recommendations? Well, coding practices are defined as rules when a violation of the coding practice will definitely result in some sort of defect or security flaw that may in fact result in an exploitable vulnerability. It's also necessary for rules to be verifiable, so uh, they can't simply be things which depend on the programmer intent, for example. So coding practices are defined as recommendations when the application of the coding practice is likely to improve system security, uh, but one or more of the requirements necessary for a coding practice to be considered a rule cannot be met. Can developers use the rules and recommendations on the wiki now? 
Well, the standards are still evolving, but the existing rules and recommendations can be used today, provided they're used in a sensible and, and sort of skeptical engineering manner. So what are the potential applications for these standards? Well, we're hoping these standards will be adopted by organizations that are seeking to establish their own uh, secure coding practices and also as a mechanism for certifying programmers in secure coding. Uh, for example, we're uh, actively working with SANS in helping them to develop their examinations, which can be used to uh, certify software developers as having a strong background in secure coding. Uh, they can also be used to establish baseline requirements of software analysis tools and for the certification of software systems. Uh, so we're uh, already today incorporating these coding standards into our training for software professionals. So what benefits will organizations get from using the coding standards? Well, the secure coding standards can be used as a basis for training software developers in secure coding practices. Consistent application of the standard should significantly improve the quality of code developed and reduce or eliminate vulnerabilities from the code. The software can then also be marketed as being compliant with CERT secure coding standards, and this will provide customers with a sense of the rigor with which the code's been developed and reduce their risk from adopting and deploying insecure software. Robert, thanks for telling us about the standards. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us. To learn more about what we've discussed today, visit the secure coding area at CERT.org.